So in part two here, we're going to look at how to use the dial indicator now to get a little bit more precise measurement and precise alignment and tramming of our head. A couple other things you may want to have that will, will make this easier is a, a large parallel that's precision ground or um, I have over here in the background a plate of glass. Uh, this is an 8x10 plate of glass and we'll get into how those will be useful um, as we get started here. I mentioned you will need a way to hold this into the head. So what I've got in here is just a draw bar placed in the top and then I have a 3 16 mill chuck placed in the bottom. So the mill chucks are something that you'll most likely end up getting or definitely want to get in the long run regardless. So I'm just going to snug that up a little bit. doesn't need to be super tight in there. Now if you can keep the mill head high enough where you can get to all four of these screws, and um, that's a good thing depending on what your work holding is set up to do. So we'll begin by trimming the tilt. Um, the best way to do this is we can do it directly off the table. Now we want to get as wide a swing as we can. This will get us the best basically measurement range. And once we get close to the plate, we can use our uh, Z-axis hand wheel to load our indicator to zero. Now, we don't want to turn down here because we'll end up bumping the indicator and its holder, depending on, on what that holder is. Instead, we want to turn uh, using the pulley up top. Or if you wanted to try to reach in here and grab this, but the pulley is so much easier. So we just want to bring it around and then we'll take a reading off of the other side. Now as you move this, you are going to drop into the grooves. And on this swing, what I'm seeing is that we have quite a bit of variance here, more than the actual indicator range is capable of measuring, which I believe on this unit is uh, 30 thousandths. So this side is high, means we need to tilt the head in that direction. From our test cuts we did in the previous video, we did kind of see that indicated as well on our test cuts. Now I'm going to loosen these, not very much, but I did tighten them up since we did do a little bit of cutting between the previous video and this. So we don't want the head to be able to move on its own. Um, we are going to go back to using that hammer to, to tap. And as we tap this, we'll see our indicator start to move. As we, so we've done a little bit of movement there. We can swing it around to the other side. And we just keep repeating this process until we get an equal measurement. So that looks pretty, so I've swung over to the other side. Try to stay in about the same position on the bed. Um, try not to be putting any pressure on anything as you're doing this. And what I'm seeing is I'm just over one and a half thousandths here, and I'm right at one and a half thousandths on the other end. I'm going to go ahead and lock that down and see if uh, that's going to be close enough for us. If you have a, an indicator that has a higher resolution than half a thousandth, uh, then obviously you can tune it in a little bit more. Although the knocking method starts to become a little difficult because um, you may knock it quite a bit more than half a thousandth or uh, with a fairly light tap still. So after I tighten those, um, we can see that I've gone to about three and a half thousandths here on this side. You will get a little bit of movement, but I the, the movement was actually fairly equal, probably because by loosening those screws, I had tilted a little bit forward and back by tightening them, I raised the height slightly. So after you do tighten those screws up, snug them, check again, make sure you're still on. Then you can tighten them down to where you want them permanently. Just tighten them a little bit at a time each. You don't need to really crank away on it and get one super tight. That's a good way to, to knock it out. You'll just wanna snug each one individually. And then as you make those changes, Keep swinging back and forth as you tighten it up. 
to make sure you're still within decent measurement range there. So we're at about a half a thousandth over a distance of eight inches is what this indicator is swinging right now. So that's pretty good. Um, again, since I'm doing it on video, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. Spend as much time as you want and need to get the quality of work that you desire uh, is really the, the correct answer. Now the difficult part is the front and back. The reason for this is we have such a narrow bed. There's not a whole lot of, of space to indicate on here. So when we were going side to side, we were indicating, um, like I said, roughly eight inches from end to end. But the width of the bed is only about 2.75 inches. So that's not a very wide range to indicate over. So this is where that parallel can come into play is as long as it's an accurate parallel and it's clean, now we have a much longer distance. I believe this is a six inch long parallel, so we've doubled our measurement distance. Now, if that's not good enough, or if you don't want to spend the money on, on a set of large parallels, another good bet is to use plate glass. Now, plate glass is surprisingly accurate in its uh, dimensions and flatness um, so this is something that you can use. It's kind of a, a poor man's surface plate, if you will. I mic'd this out and everything was well under a thousandth on every measurement that I took. A thousandth variance, it was actually less than a half a thousandth variance. You're going to maybe get a different piece of glass, you know, how well you clean it, make sure your bed is good and clean, uh, things along those lines. And this will then give us a much wider range front and back to cover. Now we know we're good on this direction. So let's just go ahead and load our indicator and then we can swing it and check our reading at the other end just to make sure our plate is flat. Now we could turn this plate if we wanted to, but we'll do some test cuts to, to see how much variation we do get out of this and make sure that our, our test cuts are sufficient. So we are still under a thousandth now from end to end on that, on that piece of uh, plate glass. Now if we swing it forward, we're going to be able to see, luckily on the camera quite easily, um, that we're at five and a half thousandths. So I had to adjust our indicator a little bit so we wouldn't drop off the edges of the plate, uh, since the plate's only eight inches in this direction, and we're um, ten inches in this direction. So right now we're swinging about seven and a quarter um, inches or so from front to back. Now the difficulty here is um, seeing that indicator. Now you can get your head back there. Uh, another good tip, maybe if you're not so flexible, is to use, a, let's say if you've got an iPhone or an Android phone with a camera, you can put it back there and, and get a mere reading of what you're measuring. So front to back, we're about five thousandths off. So we're a lot better front to back uh, than we were side to side, at least initially. And we just keep swinging this back and forth. Oh, making it's way too large of an adjustment. This is where the long handled hex wrenches can come into play because you've got that that further out leverage and you can move it smaller increments to try to get this tuned in. So we just keep doing that until we again get an equal number front to back. You want to try to keep um, along the y-axis right when you're doing this measurement. So try to get to the same point back here as you are up here, keeping it all 90 degree angles. Same thing uh, when you're going on the x-axis side to side. So now our, our real measurement is to cut some pieces and, and see how they look as well to make sure we didn't make any mistakes here. So let me set up to do some test cuts. So I'm just going to do a rough alignment of the vise since we are just going to be doing some surfacing cuts, I'll show you later how to do a, a more precise alignment of the vise. Now the larger the diameter of cutter, the more pronounced any of our misalignments going to be. So I'm going to use a fly cutter, which is the, the largest diameter cutter you can use on the Sherline. Um, from the factory, this fly cutter extended out as I'm doing now is the largest diameter that we're going to be able to fit. Um, a lot of people end up making a larger fly cutter um, custom, so we'll probably do that as well at some point. So just got a one inch square block of aluminum that I'm going to put in here. 
and we're just going to surface it. Um, and our goal is to not have any sort of a line on the surface. So let me switch out and get a little bit closer view for you guys. So right off the bat, it looks to me like I've got some front to back misalignment still. It could be deflection of the cutter, but it seems like I'm taking quite a bit of a cut. And I can't quite clear, with this setup, I can't quite clear the uh, back of the table. I'm going too far back. So this is not the. This is a good way to cut a test piece to check your, your left to right accuracy. Um, I can tell that I probably have a little bit of front to back problems still. And let's find out how our left to right is. I want to take this at pretty much extremes um, on either side. Because of this setup and the way I'm cutting front to back and, and the diameter of this cutter, I can't quite clear the edge um, when I go back. I run into the, um, the bottom of the column here, which is something I plan on eventually milling off a little bit anyways. So, so as we take this second cut, If our alignment is good, the line down the middle should virtually disappear. Now because my front to back uh, is a little bit off, I'm going to need to go through the second because here I'll start getting another cut. So there you see there's another cut. And as I mentioned, I'm going to impact the vise to the bottom of the column. Now I normally wouldn't do a cut in this manner. Um, normally I would cut along the, the length of it. So here's a, a nice up close view of it. Now we still do have a blending, but you can see it is actually a blending. We don't have a hard line there. Um, there's nothing to feel there. So that could easily polish out if you didn't want that look. Um, some people you know, quite like that look. Um, it, it is a, a little bit of a decorative cut using um, a fly cutter like this. Now because my layout was not perfect, um, I do have these little corners here that didn't get cut. So right now the cutter is circling entirely around the piece. Um, we cut as we were going across it and we were cutting when the cutter was in this direction. Now we're going to keep moving the piece and we should start cutting when the cutter is over here. Uh, this actually shouldn't cut if, if our alignment is perfect. It should just more or less polish the surface. And we are getting a very, very light cut there. We'll have to do some more test cuts and I'll have to make sure I'm not, uh, I don't have anything loose still. You will get a little bit of a, a second cut regardless because on the first cut you're cutting very micro grooves that are in an arc in this direction. As you go past, now you're cutting micro grooves that are in an arc in this direction. So you're knocking down the ridges basically. So and there's our piece. I mean, we've got a, a pretty decent finish on that. I'm, I'm fairly up close here, as you can see. Um, and depending on which way we turn it, we get a little bit of, of both cuts. We can see a couple of the cuts in this direction. So this is this is really how you can test and and see if if your alignment is perfect. Is is by putting some pieces through, and determining um, what the results are. So I have a few other adjustments that I need to make on this definitely front to back and uh, a little bit side to side for for a lot of people this is going to be fine particularly the side to side on this the, the left to right tilt um, is is very good the uh, front to back is a little bit off so we could adjust that further now it, it gets really difficult to get this sort of uh, minute accuracy 
without uh, some other way that rather than using a hammer to, to nudge and adjust since we're on a fairly small mill. So I'm going to look at putting together an alignment aid that should allow you to tune in a little more precisely those adjustments without uh, having to result to a hammer necessarily. Okay, and to wrap up this video, we're going to do a test cut for the front back of the workpiece. In order to do this, we need to align our fly cutter to where it's going to cut roughly down the center on the long axis of the piece here. And something I haven't mentioned uh, before is the idea of a standard or conventional cut versus a climb cut. We're going to get into that in, in some other videos, um, and I would recommend that you watch those if you don't know what those are. And also on speeds and feeds, really go, go slow. Uh, go with a low speed and, and go slow um, until you get a feel for the machine and until you've got a better idea um, of what's going on. So just a couple of safety tips there. And as always, make sure we can clear the workpiece. Okay, so now we've done that left to right cut and we do have a definite edge there. Um, so that's telling us that our, our front to back alignment is off. Um, I can feel that edge. You can definitely see it's a hard line. Um, there's no real blending of the cuts there. Um, the one stop and the other begin. It's not, it's not horrible, uh, but again, depending on what you're doing and what accuracy you want and need, uh, you may need to fine tune the lathe a little bit more past this. Sorry, mill. Um, I always am calling the lay the mill and the mill a lathe in these videos. I do apologize for that. So I'm just going to leave my adjustments as is for now because they're close enough for some of the samples that I want to, to make and, and use for demonstration purposes. So I want you to see that the, the mill does not have to be perfectly aligned in order for you to turn out pieces that are quality. Now, you, you do want it somewhat aligned, um, aligned as, as close as we've got now or, or uh, maybe a little bit more off, but but not much more off. I mean, the, the rough alignment we did, we could definitely see some poor quality in our work pieces. Um, we could definitely see some very rough cuts, and we didn't do all these samples, and we didn't use as large a diameter cutter, so our um, misalignment was not as pronounced as, as it could have been. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to leave comments, thumbs up, subscribe, uh, all that good YouTube stuff. I always welcome and am open to suggestions, so let me know um, if you liked the video, didn't like the video, thinks that something should be different, and uh, I may add some addendums and things along those lines as we go. We will end up coming back later and doing a, a part three to do um, a final fine tune and using a more accurate test indicator or dial indicator to do that, uh, but for now I'm just going to leave this as part one and part two, and we'll get on to some techniques of using the mill.